welcome to Torbay ABCD co-production Ice Creams and Seagulls game. And there's a little video that's going to show here, I think, Matt. Just an example of how ice creams and seagulls work in Torbay. We're going to show you now. Here we go. So um, yeah, as you can see, um, sometimes um, the seagulls come and take away our ice creams um, on the seafront at Tor Bay. Um, even though we always look for what is strong and we lick a lot of ice creams in Tor Bay, life is messy and are, there are inevitably going to be some seagull moments. We're now going to hear about some of those ice creams and seagulls in asset-based community development in Tor Bay. During the game, anyone can type a question in the chat about anything A, B, C, D. And at the end of the game, you will have a break and go into the breakout room that you've chosen or been allocated to for a particular group or activity. In your breakout room, you'll be able to ask presenters for that group any questions you have about it. If you have any other questions about any other groups or anything else A, B, C, D, please just type them in the chat at any point. After we've played the game and you've been in a breakout room with your chosen activity or group, we'll come back together again um, after a break of five minutes after the game and we'll answer as many of your other questions as we can and we'll answer the rest that we may not have time for by email. So I'm now going to hand you over to our marvellous MC, David, to play the game, Ice Creams and Seagulls. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, you've all played snakes and ladders. So I think in terms of the seagulls as the snakes, which is a bit harsh, and the ice creams as the ladders. So it's a very simple game, as we all know. Um, if we can start with rolling the dice, we can show you the board and we can get started. Straight off with a two. Okay, so where's that gonna take us on the board? Well, probably to number two. Oh, straight onto an ice cream, positive. And up to number 16, and I'd like to introduce you to uh, Victoria, who's going to introduce you to the asset map of Brixham. Hi, so I'm Victoria and I'm the community builder for Brixham. Um, this is an asset map that we created and I found that asset mapping was a fantastic tool to use within the community to connect the assets, gems and hidden places, sorry, <laughs> that can be hit, lay hidden people not even realizing and it's an asset until it's pointed out. So it's a learning to look at within the community from a different perspective, a different lens, and suddenly you start seeing assets everywhere. An asset could be a person, a building, a bench, the bus stop, green spaces, etc. I physically take the asset map to different locations and events within Brixham and people are always naturally drawn to this beautiful map painted by one of our local artists. And usually, end up with a crowd around it, always speaking, sparking the imagination and the wonder at all the hidden gems that we have in Brixham. I always encourage people to keep an on adding to the map so it continues to evolve and forever growing. When things eventually go back to some kind of normality, I'll be putting the map up in various locations around Brixham and leaving it for people to keep adding their gems and assets. And one of the best assets we found in Brixham was all the ice cream shops. <laughs> Thank you, Victoria. Um, okay, can we go back to the board and throw the dice, please? Oh, it's a one, and so we're going to go from 16 to 17. Onto a seagull. Let's, whoa, right back down to number three. Let me introduce you to June, who'd like to introduce a few of the challenges around the 
uh, around Tilfa, the Torbay over 50s assembly. Hello everyone, I'm June. As one of my volunteer roles within the Aging Well Programme Board, I'm part of the action group for developing the Torbay over 50s assembly, which is known as TOFA. It was always intended an assembly would be a legacy from the Aging Well Torbay Programme, which has been funded by the big lottery. Work started and progress was being made, but along came COVID-19 and which paused and changed the way we worked. However, there is light at the end of the tunnel and we are now pushing forward with our plans. The important thing for TOFA is not to be a talking shop, but should have um, direct influence over local decision-making for all residents. The action group, together with statutory organizations, drew up an aging friendly charter, stressing people were the solution, not the problem. This charter has now been reviewed and adapted to suit individual responsibilities and requirements, being signed by Torbay Council and the NHS to date with more to follow. As the stated needs of residents followed the World Health Organization aging friendly themes, we decided to apply for membership, which was accepted. Three of us have been working on a three year plan and this was presented uh, together with the requisite letter from the leader of Torbay Council, Steve Darling. And I'm pleased to say that that request has now been accepted and we have been enrolled as part of the World Health Organization, um, part of cities, aging friendly cities and communities. We look forward with hope and enthusiasm that post COVID-19, the assembly will have a positive impact in ensuring Torbay is truly age friendly. And by working together, we can develop Torbay as a great place to work and live. Thank you. Thank you, June. Um, that's uh, two mentions of COVID already. I think there may be more to come. Um, let's go back to the board, please, Matt, and let's roll the dice. It's another two. Where will that deck chair go next? Oh, it's another ice cream. It's another positive. So we go straight up to number 11. And I'd like to introduce you to Ben, who's going to tell us all about the terrific community facility that is The Shed. Hi there. I'm Ben, Benjamin. Um, so uh, we... Uh, this all started about three years ago um, when I retired and uh, Tara, um, Tara Acton, the community builder, had already amassed a group of people who wanted, um, were looking for some space to set up a, a shed, sort of really based on the men in sheds sort of type thing. And I realised that I had far more space in the building that we bought. I, I bought it to sell up pottery and um and uh we realized that we could actually accommodate the shed and it's been uh, that has been really successful um i don't know if i can uh, share my no no okay um um so um uh over the years um people have been so generous and donating tools and their expertise and it's really been a very good relationship whereas um the uh shed gets rent free but it's been helping us to the people in it have been helping to renovate the building to make it uh um watertight to, to um and fix up because it was in a pretty parlor state um and they is there another slide there you have another slide? No. Ooh. And if you want to share now, you should be able to. Okay, I'll share now. Um, got a few more, few more pictures to show you. Um, I thought I knew how to do this. Here we go. Um, yeah. So, oh, yeah. Um, so. Uh, it's mostly guys, but we have some women as well. They've been doing really hard work, painting, renovating, fixing up. And um, 
And the people there have been making, uh, doing all sorts of things, renovating toys, furniture, and that's helped bring in some income to help keep the whole thing going. There's Ross on the on the right there. Um, he does amazing things on the lathe. And the great thing is that these people have these skills and they hand them on to other people. Um, um, there's some more repair work going on there. And there, there's Eric uh, mending tools. So people bring in their old rusty tools and uh, uh, these are renovated and made all shiny and new again and sold and um, to, to help keep, keep the shed going. And it has been doing really well. Inevitably, I'm going to mention the awful COVID. Things have obviously needed to stop for a while, but we're now back up, up and running again. Um, and the pottery is also going to be up and running again in the next week or two. And I think the future is really bright um, for for the shed and for the uh, for the workshop. And I think um, everybody who's been involved has, you know, really, really got a lot of value out of it. And it's really thanks to Tara initially and, um, and the community builders to actually bring everybody together to make it work. And I'd like to say thank you to you all for that. Thank you, Ben. Um, I really do, I can't recommend this place highly enough. If you ever come to Tall Bay, make sure that one of us uh, takes you up to the shed. It, the buzz in there is absolutely terrific. Okay, Matt, can we uh, roll the dice, please? That's a three, so we're going to... Ah, nowhere in particular. Can we throw the dice again, please, uh, Matt? A three. Okay, where are we going now? Oh dear. <laughs> oh, back down to number three. I love this game. Um, let me introduce you to uh, Christine, who's going to tell us about the challenges she faced when setting up the Coffee Morning and the Tuesday Club. Hello, everybody. My patch is Preston in Paynton. And every month I write an article in the Beach Hut magazine. This is a free magazine that goes to about 12,000 households every month. It's a great magazine for us to support because the people who find time to read it tend to be the lonely and isolated people over 50. Well, very early on in my life as a community builder, I wrote what, about what was going on in Lower Preston and mentioned that I would like to get to know what was going on in Upper Preston. As a result of that article, Dot and her husband Mike got in touch with me. They were very interested in learning more about what my job entails and so invited me up for a cup of tea. That was in the good old days when we were allowed in each other's houses. We had a long and interesting conversation and I suggested they invite some neighbours around to meet me. The invitations went out, but no one had time or inclination to meet me. After that initial failure, I wrote a letter inviting people to come to a coffee morning to meet each other and talk about what they'd like to see happen in their area. I hand delivered 70 copies in one street before losing the will to live and dumping the remaining 30 copies in the local post office. This was a much more successful idea. It seems that people are afraid of being trapped with strangers in their home. The cafe provided a neutral place to meet and they knew that they could easily leave if they were uncomfortable. We held two coffee mornings a fortnight apart. A total of 18 people came and of them there was a core of six people who came both times. They were the ones who asked if it could continue and the Tuesday Club was born. This core group has remained at the heart of the Tuesday Club which has been going since September 2015. We chose to put it on twice a month because I could not commit to weekly meetings. After about 18 months, a different coffee morning I had helped set up changed from twice a month to weekly meetings. I wrote about that and the Tuesday Club members, seeing that article, asked if they could do the same. I said, of course you can, it's your group, you can do as you like, but I can't come every week. Well, they were fine with that and I slowly exited myself from the regular meetings. 
I started by arriving later and later until one week I just didn't turn up at all. By then they were so used to organising themselves that they barely noticed I wasn't there. Although they are always pleased to see me on the rare occasions I do drop in to see them. The club really took off when it was weekly as it became a part of people's weekly routine. And also if people had to miss a week, they didn't get confused as to whether the club would be meeting or not when they got back. On the upside, this group has been amazing at supporting each other by phone calls and helping each other with shopping during the pandemic. Six years ago, I strongly suspect that most of these people would have needed the helpline to survive the pandemic. Instead, their own strong bonds of friendship have sustained them and helped them cope with everything from moving house to hospital appointments. They truly are a wonderful group of friends. A sad byproduct was that the Wednesday club, who met in the same cafe on a Wednesday afternoon, no longer attracted enough people. Because they used to be on consecutive weeks, some people used to go to both. Once Tuesday club was every week, those people stayed with Tuesday club and stopped going to the Wednesday club. Sadly, the numbers then dwindled so far that they decided to disband the Wednesday club. You can't win them all. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. Uh, just one of the many activities we can't wait, wait to get back to. Literally champing up the bit. Okay, let's roll the dice. A four. Oh, no, no, okay, let's try it again. A two, is this more promising? Oh, we're heading for an ice cream. We're gonna go for another positive. So I would like to introduce you to Jenny and Amanda, who are going to talk to us about the craft group. Hi. I'm Jenny Langridge and I'm a community builder and I would like to introduce the Community Creative Craft Group. The craft group started five years ago. It was the first group we helped to support in our area. It had been a very much a test and learn group and a group that has ticked many boxes. The group member Jane that Amanda will be talking about in a minute for our ice cream moment in Jane's words says, since attending the craft group, my life has been truly transformed. I have made good friends for life. The group are supportive, kind and caring, and we laugh, cry, and make beautiful crafts. Hello, I'm Amanda Lynn, and I work with Jenny. Um, so the craft group was busily organizing a big day out um, to the West Point County Show. And this is like a really big event every year. And being mindful of one of the members' mobility, the group encouraged and supported Jane to hire a mobility scooter when they got there. This was a very big deal for Jane as she suffers from anxiety and depression. And before she attended the group, in her own words, um, she had said, I had almost become a recluse due to illness and mobility. So with the encouragement and support, Jane did hire a mobility scooter and was able to spend the day joining in with others and actually had trouble keeping up with Jane. This had been the first day out from the environment of her home and her craft group and she was gone, that she'd gone on for a very long time. Not only did she enjoy the day, she, a day she never thought that she would be able to attend, but within two weeks, Jane had bought herself a mobility scooter which she says has given her a new lease of life. And Jane has been able to attend other social activities and there's absolutely no stopping her now. This would never have happened if she had not attended the craft group and met amazing supportive friends who so wanted her to join in on the social activities of this group. It's just been wonderful. Thank, Thank you, you, Jenny. Thank you, Amanda. Uh, how, can you, how can you not smile when you hear stories like this? Okay, back to the game. And we have a, a four, which takes us to Oh, I can see what's coming. It's another challenge. And this time I'd like to introduce you to Nina, Nina Cooper, who 
If you've been on any of the other calls today, you may already know something about, but this is all about the Crafty Fox Community Cafe and Hub. Hello, yes. Um, mine was definitely a seagull moment. Um, and really, the first part of the seagull, seagull moment was mine because in the patch where I started working, there was nowhere local in the neighbourhood to meet up. On the outskirts, there were several supermarket cafes, but I soon learned that that wasn't the place to catch up with local community. I had very limited bumping places, that is, places to meet and talk to the community. So I decided to find out what other people thought um, and I set up a pop-up cafe to enable me to engage locals. I had to be creative so I set up a gazebo every Wednesday for a few months on the green space opposite the shops on the Foxhole Estate where I was working. I decorated it with colourful bunting and served teas and, and cake in bone china. It was successful and enabled me to have many conversations to find out what the community were passionate about. I spoke to many people and over and over again, people would talk to me about the lack of a safe space to meet for coffee and a chat. They felt disconnected and in some cases very lonely. Some of the really enthusiastic individuals and myself got together over the next few months and a couple of the locals approached two sanctuary housing staff at a Christmas event. They asked about their local corporate office based in the row of shops. It was unused and would have been would be a great place to create a community cafe. After some time sanctuary got in touch and they agreed to gift the space to the community. Thank you. Wow. Um, a challenge, and perhaps we'll find out later whether that's a challenge that was overcome. Okay. Let's roll the dice. It's a three, which takes us to... Ah, nowhere in particular. Sorry, Matt, can we throw again? A two. Oh, another ice cream moment. More good news coming your way, this time from Marianne about the Creative Arts Celebration in Chelston. Hello, my name's Marianne. I'm the Creative Community Builder for Aging Well and the Torbay Community Development Trust. And I'd like to tell you about a fantastic project that we did last year called Celebrate Chelston. I'd like to share my screen with you now to show you some fantastic pictures of the project. So earlier this year we worked with Torbay Culture to offer Great Places lottery funding to a neighbourhood in Torquay. We chose the neighbourhood by asking the question, what's already there? We went to the people in Chelston and we said we have this funding to do something creative, to celebrate your neighbourhood what would you like to do? What kind of art would you like to be involved with? Or be an audience to? We took an amazing converted van called Chrysalis to events in the community like street parties, dog show and play days. And we went door knocking to ask people what they would like to see happen in Chelston. This is me and Tara, the community builder for Chelston. We then invited art facilitator, Sally Clements and artist Joe Beale to invite people to come together at workshops to share their memories of Chelston and to make books to write and draw in. And we asked them, 
What's your favourite thing about Charleston? Where are your favourite places? Some people from the workshop went on to write the brief interview and commission the artists with us. They chose Willow Sculpture artist Vic Westway from Coach House Arts and Kate Richards, a participatory artist from Tor Abbey. And together they planted three live willow sculptures in their three favourite parks. An owl in Pretty Park, a hedgehog in Victoria Park and a hare in Armada Park. Wow. Uh, amazing creations, amazing creations. Okay, uh, can we roll, please? That's a four, and that is going to take us... somewhere. Oh, I can see what's coming. It's another challenge. And this time I'd like to introduce you to Dan, who's going to talk to you about the challenges they faced when setting up the Cricket Field Community Garden. Yes, thank you. I'm Dan, the community builder for Heal and Barton and Whatcom. Um, I came across this patch of ground that was being unused and um, myself and some of the residents thought it'd be great to turn into a community garden. Unfortunately, um, it had been a project in the past and it, it hadn't worked, but the charity that was running it um, had, had a chemical toilet on the site, which was costing £120 a month. Um, so we couldn't keep it going because at that point we had no money. Um, so that was our seagull moment. However, because of that seagull moment, it actually turned into an excellent opportunity because it allowed the community to come together. Um, so we teamed up with charities like Playtour Bay, um, Stagecoach came along um, and helped us and the adults, um, adult social workers came and did a big, big, big green cleanup day, a bit hard to say that, um, and uh, we raised money together and just because of that we have built a compost toilet. So now we have a compost toilet which is going to be much more sustainable, environmentally friendly for us. Um, and with that on site, it's now allowing us to have school groups on site and other residents and it's really growing and thriving. It's a place to be, uh, a place to belong and a place to grow and uh, it's making a big difference. Thank you. Fabulous. Thank you, Dan. That's, um, that's what we do. We help people overcome challenges. Okay, back onto the game. Our first six. Excellent. Hmm. Not that it gets us anywhere in particular. Can we roll again, please? It's a five. Big numbers. <laughs> That's one big seagull, um, which brings us to another challenge. And to talk us through that, I'd like to introduce you to Joy, who's going to tell us all about the Evening Stroll Walking Group. Hello. Um, just imagine, I've got 10 people waiting to go on an evening stroll on Babacombe Downs. It's shrouded in mist and we are feeling decidedly damp. My co-leader for the walk is due to come on the open top bus, but it's running late. The mood of the group is decidedly flat, and we cannot start without Ursha and the two people she brings with her. Then the shape of the bus looms out of a cloud and off hops Ursha, full of apologies and brights the button. 
everyone is so relieved and cheered up and we quickly move off to get warmed up. My, my name is Joy and I'm a volunteer for Ageing Well. I've been part of a walking group for nearly five years now. It seeks to promote healthy activity for those who are over 50, who otherwise might not go out alone in the evening. Each walk rounds off with a social gathering at a local pub or coffee bar. This all came about during a coffee morning discussion with Ursha Garretley, community builder for Ellicum and Plainmore in Torquay. I wanted to start a group for slow walkers and Paul Field, another volunteer, agreed to lead any fast walkers who came along. We call it the evening strollers. The average attendance is 12 to 15 people and we meet twice a month, April to the end of September. It's a chance to chat whilst taking some exercise. Ursha and I obtained grants enabling us to fund a minibus during the winter months from Greenheart Cockington and What Matters to You Matters to Me. We visited Tynmouth and Totnes, Preston near Paynton and Cockington, a local picturesque village. Funds were enough to pay for coffee and cake on one trip and a roast dinner on another. These outings strengthened community bonds. Dory, one of our regular attendees, had this to say. I hadn't had an evening out since the year 2000. When I heard the ageing well had arranged evening walks, I dashed off to the rendezvous as if I were jet propelled. The friendships made on these walks are rewarding and beneficial, far better than being at home alone watching TV. Thank you, Joy. And you'll have spotted in the background there uh, our uh, cruise ships, which have been in the bay uh, much to our delight, uh, not to theirs, but they've been there since the beginning of COVID, and I think there are eight parked in the bay at the moment. Quite a sight. Anyway, back to the game, please. It's the one, which again takes us to number two, an ice cream moment. Some more good news coming your way, this time from Frank, who's going to tell us about the Aging Well Festival. Hi, I'm Frank, I'm a volunteer in Aging Well, I just had a problem in unmuting me. <laughs> the festival is now in its seventh year. It's been organised mainly and run by volunteers with the help from a few dedicated staff. It started slowly and grew to over 3,000 visitors in 2019 in one venue. Along the way, we had a few problems to overcome, such as one venue cancelled a month before the event, causing panic in finding another venue and informing everybody about the change. Venues for over 3,000 people suitable for disabled access are few and far between. Then, as we all know, COVID struck and the physical event had to be cancelled in 2020. So with even greater help from the professionals, we organised a virtual event over the internet and simultaneously over the local FM radio station. This caused some problems to many older people who don't have access to the internet, but with the radio broadcast and the help of friends, many people accessed the event. And then in addition, over the following few days, there were considerable additional access because it was still available on the internet. This year has been similar. We started by planning a physical event, but realised that the uncertainty over COVID made it impossible. So once again, we are back to a virtual festival. But we're planning an additional final physical festival in March next year to celebrate the seven years of ageing well in Torbay and to inform people of the ongoing services and events continuing in the following years. That's my festival. Thank you, Frank. Um, and never underestimate the amount of effort that goes in to organising that. And they are all volunteers. And no sooner do they finish one festival than they're straight into organising the next one. An amazing team. Uh, thank you. Back to the game. It's the one. Uh, 
Oh. <laughs> it's a long way up that board. Um, let me introduce you to a new challenge. Uh, this time we're going to uh, bring in Tara, Tara Acton, who's going to talk about the Goshen Rosary Triangle, which was wasteland, but... Thank you. This is a story from Derelict to Dreams. For decades, this once wasteland sat accumulating rubbish, dumped cars, rodents, and general demoralisation. Four years ago, I knocked on every door around this space and invited people for tea and cake to share their ideas for the triangle. Over 50 people came to that first meeting, and I'd just never known such a response like that before. People clearly wanted change. They identified uh, key aspirations as a group. These were spaces to grow and an area for children to play. A local graphic designer made a model scale of the space, which was agreed upon all over tea and cake. At the same time as this, much needed remedial work happened, such as removing the self-perpetuating dumped cars and rubbish. This was an important period. However, it was also frustrating as a lot of the work was being put in, but they were only just getting to the start line. Things weren't getting any better yet. They were just getting less bad. But then after a year and a half, there was finally a breakthrough. Some brave residents opted to join uh, a subgroup and work on funding bids. After months of uh, doing this, their efforts paid off. There was money granted from the local MP and other small sources, and with my help, they managed to get a £25,000 grant from the Ministry of Housing, Communities and Local Government. The group were now in business. They commissioned a local playground designer to create a natural play space and do a scaled map planning the whole of the triangle. The local community shed that we heard about earlier helped build a raised bed for the project as well. An unexpected outcome with all of this uh, came from needing to evidence previous use of the triangle to the funders, meaning out of the woodwork residents found pictures of them and their family in days gone by, including monumental moment of VU Day celebrations. Off the back of this, the group hosted numerous history nights, sharing memories, photos and stories. People found connections with residents they thought to be long gone. It was a heartwarming set of events to be part of. The developments in this space are actually endless. <laughs> Last year, the local college made bespoke benches for them and residents have planted in every corner and children are now always in their playing. And of course, there's been a series of outdoor heart lessons as well. Um, the space has particularly been a blessing over the last year as well. Thank you, Tara. Um, great, again, another great community project. Uh, all coming together as a result of the efforts of the community. So, let's roll the dice. Five. Oh, ice cream, go, 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 go. Yeah, excellent, splendid. Another positive, and this time we're going to hear from Nicola, who's going to tell us about the Bollywood Dance Group. Hi there, my name's Nicola and um, just to say that I'm the one that's responsible for all this Bollywood dancing in the Bay. I moved back to Brixham um, about five years ago. I was living in the United Arab Emirates and teaching Bollywood dance to Emirati ladies. And I've always taught dance so I decided I'd come back and I would carry on. That's just a picture of us together at the um, I think it was actually at the painting carnival. Anyway, um, so I did, and um, I started some classes at the Edge in Brixham, and um, Victoria taught there, she was teaching her yoga. So she did say to me uh, that I could probably qualify for a little bit of funding, um, and that would help to um, just help kickstart the class a bit. These are some of my wonderful women that couldn't be here today, I'd love to have brought them. And um, so that's what we did. And um, so as a result, uh, I created the class for ladies only. Yeah, sexist, I know, but you know, it had to be done. And um, so uh, I got a group of women together and it grew. And uh, as a result, we've got quite a big group and a beginner's class as well. 
the aim of the class um, isn't just about the dance, it's about sharing. Uh, so it's sharing skills, it's sharing good times, it's sharing not the good time, not, you know, not when it isn't just the good times, it's about supporting each other. And this bunch of women do that in, you know, absolute spades, they're amazing. And um, so what I did, because I was hoping to share this dialogue with one of the ladies that comes to my class, who is there, <laughs> the little lady, Malaysian lady called Yusi, uh, but she couldn't come. So what I did instead is I, um, I actually went out to my WhatsApp group um, and asked the ladies to give me some feedback um, about their experience of Bollywood dance. So it was coming from their mouths. It was informing from, from their point of view. And uh, so I had loads and loads of responses and I don't want to bore you with all those responses. So I'm just going to do what I wasn't going to do, which is read some out. Um, and just to say one more thing about the dance is that it's a byproduct of what we do, but it's also a conduit for what we do. So, um, you know, it's a funny mix. So anyway, Nikki is one of my first ladies who I've got a little quote from and uh, she's been coming to me um, probably one of my most regular um, and comes to every single class she possibly can do but has had a difficult few years. Um, I won't say why because it's um, private um, and she said that one of the things that really helped her smile through uh, was coming to this dance class and what she did say which was lovely as well was that the laughter that we share is as good for the soul as the exercises for our bodies. <laughs> and uh, that's certainly true. So there, there is a theme running through this. So um, I've got some, a new lady start and uh, she said, um, it feels good to step out of life for an hour uh, and concentrate on something else. So it, I think that's a really um, clever and very, um, heartfelt thing to say. Um, and uh, then I've got Yusi's quote, which is, I feel so lifted by dancing with Nicola and the wonderful ladies. It's done wonders uh, for my emotional and mental well-being in challenging times. And she's not, she's talking about all the things that had happened to her recently. Um, somebody just said very, very, very briefly, it changes my mood. Uh, another one said sense of calm and well-being, so great for the soul. And then I had a lady that returned to me uh, who actually used to dance with me when she was 14. <laughs> and that was a completely different style of dance. It was jazz dance that I taught. And she moved back to Brixham from Sicily and she was feeling very useless. And she said the class changed that completely. Um, and it, she said it inspires her with confidence um, and um, it's fun and she has, she gets a great sense of well-being from it. Um, and she also said, which was the quote of my day, uh, I morph more than Madonna, <laughs> which I thought was really funny. Um, so finally, just to say, um, this class, um, I think dance in particular is a great social prescriber in that, um, because you have to retain the knowledge of the routine, and I've, I think I've got 60 in my bank up here, um, for things like dementia, so, you know, which ties in with the aging well process, um, it can re you have to not just do the routines, you've got to remember them. And um, so, yes, we've had some wonderful memories. We're going to carry on. I learned how to Zoom. And um, that's it, really, folks. It speaks for itself. <laughs> thank, thank you, you. thank you Nicola an energetic lot we are here in Torbay I should <laughs> probably get getting that impression now um okay can we roll the dice please a one how many squares are there on the board um oh oh another challenge and um, this time we're going to go back to Marianne about the challenges that we had to face during the Chelston celebrations. So uh, this is a story of two halves, um, the Chelston celebration 
and it started off as a delicious ice cream as we heard earlier. Now we're going to find out what happened when the seagull swooped in with COVID. So I'm just going to share my screen. Oh, a little box has come up there. Oh, here we go, marvellous. And uh, any moment now, we should see the rest of the photographs. Can you see those okay? Yeah, good. Uh, so um, after the first workshop, making willow birds, oops, now it's, hang on a minute, right, it's, I'm sorry about this, I've got to do it like this, okay, um, slide, sorry, just bear with me, right, marvellous, okay, that's better. So after the first workshop, making these fantastic willow birds that you can see sitting in this tree, lockdown hit us and the rest of the workshops had to be cancelled then this amazing artist took 200 willow kits in six bin bags to the post office for people to make stars and hearts at home and to hang them in their gardens and windows and they shared them all on Facebook. A big party in their favourite park that we'd all hoped for at the end of the project couldn't happen now. So instead we had a procession through Charleston past 500 houses who we fly the day before because we couldn't attract a crowd of course. Crooked Temper Samba Band, Trio of Men and Doorstep Arts, Bumblebee Dancers, dance with people on their doorsteps. They made tea and scones, oops a daisy, <laughs> hang on let's find the tea and scones. There we are, sorry about that. Uh, they made tea and scones. Oops, okay. And they smiled and clapped on their doorsteps at higher beings, stilt walkers, and Elphick the jester juggling on his unicycle. And online that day, Sam Acoustic sang and and George and Amy danced and Jane Anderson sang and played guitar and um, at the park people came and had their photograph taken with the owl to go on a giant mosaic banner that says celebrate Chelston we're still waiting for that moment where we're going to get everyone together from the project to find their photograph on there and say, wasn't that fantastic? What should we do next? Splendid. Thank you, Marianne. Um, okay, we are on square 19, so let's throw the dice. Try it in with a five. Oh, it's an ice cream. It's an ice cream. We've got another positive and we're going to go back to Nina to give us some really good news about the Crafty Fox. Hello again. Um, yes, to bring the ice cream moment, um, it happened in October 2016 when the Crafty Fox was born. The local volunteers had worked very hard to turn the drab corporate office into a welcoming, lively cafe. Their opening day arrived. They were joined by many. There was an amazing selection of tasty cakes and a buzzing atmosphere. That day many ideas were discussed and soon after the cafe evolved into a cafe and community hub, providing help training opportunities, activities and importantly that safe space where people could meet up with others and a place for long-lasting friendships to develop. 
the volunteers felt very proud. They had started to make a difference. Right. Their reputation for crafts reached far and wide. And in 2018, they received an invitation from a top Ness organisation and they've been asked to help design and create for the amazing Chrysalis community vehicle. As a foreign... They created a large mosaic, yarn bombs and beautiful stained glass windows. Also, the Torbay Yarn Bombers group was set up at the Crafty Fox. It started as a small knitting group and became the infamous Yarn Bombers who were invited to events to decorate various outdoor spaces over Tor Bay. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Nina. And the Tor Bay Yarn Bombers really are something else. A whole bunch of characters who make me laugh every time I meet up with them. Uh, and they also make these incredible creations. Okay, can I just remind people, if, if you're not muted, could you please mute? There's a bit of uh, chatter in the background. Um, back to the game, please. To four. Which is going to take us to... Oh, another seagull. Another challenge. Um, wow. Okay, I'm going to bring uh, Marianne back. Uh, to talk about the challenges she faced when setting up flash mobs across Tor Bay. So, uh, hello again. Um, hopefully you're going to see some lovely pictures now that uh, Matt is going to put up on the screen. Here we go. Marvellous. So, we've seen a few seagulls while dancing with our ageing well flash mob on seafronts across Tor Bay. Like the huge, huge speaker that I pulled along on a trolley up and down steps onto a beach only for it to stop working. And rain. Over 20 people turned up at Goodrington Beach to dance in torrential rain. And we got absolutely soaked rehearsing before we danced to We Go Together from Greece 32 times behind our 1948 Red Ford truck on the route of Torbay Carnival. Um, yeah, I'm Marianne and uh, I'm the creative community builder, so I get involved with anything creative that people want to do in Tor Bay. Asset based community is always about looking for what's strong, and for me, it's about going where the energy is and making it fun to be part of something. We might ask people, What's your favourite thing? What do you love doing? What are your passions in life? And the other question we ask is, what would you like to see happening here? So about five years ago, someone said to me, I've always wanted to be in a flash mob. So I asked everyone in every daytime exercise class across Tor Bay, would you like to be in a flash mob? I soon discovered that I also needed to explain that we weren't going to go out into the shopping precinct and flash on mass. It was either the answer to every woman's secret fantasy or they were never going to do it in a million years. That summer, we worked with seven brilliant community dance leaders, including Anne and Claire, to choreograph ABBA's Dancing Queen and rehearse it with around 150 people who flash mobbed their way across the bay at 10 different sites, from beaches to shopping centres. Our oldest dancer was 94, Mrs. Sweet, and youngest was Maisie, who was four years old. We made a film of them all doing it, and at the premiere, laid out a red carpet, had bubbly and canapes, before they all watched themselves dancing and with utter delight, spotted themselves and on the credits at the end were their names. Many friendships across the bay were made that summer and nurtured during the years that followed as we took the flash mob on tour with dancing in the street and car wash and as we held get togethers to celebrate afterwards. Oh, what, what's 
Oh, I need to whiz, just whiz through the rest of these slides because they <laughs> looks like they got stuck somewhere. There, there we are on the beach at Meadfoot. And here we are at Babacombe. There's Tara. Here we are at the Christmas Sparkle in Tour. And there we are at Goodrington. And here we are at Tour Abbey at the Aging Well Festival there. Here we are at Paynton on the seafront. And this is the um, Tour Bay Carnival. We go together. And oh, here we are doing car wash in Babacan. And oh, this is one of our celebration events where we're playing the wool game together. Uh, yeah, getting a bit of time banking organised. Oh, and this is uh, back to Babacan just after we've done the flash mobs. And I think there's, is there one last slide? No, nope, that's Thank it. You. Here we are. Thank you. Thank you, Marianne. I told you we were an energetic lot. Um, and you never know where we're going to crop up next. Um, OK, let's get that dice roll, please. It's a three, and we must be getting near the top of the board now. Oh, no, throw again, Matt, please. It's a five. Top row, surely. Yes, indeed. Straight up to number 47. And we have another positive. And we're going back to Christine to say what happened to the Tuesday Club and the bus. Hello, everybody. So... Probably the worst seagull moment we had at Tuesday Club also turned into one of the best ice cream moments. There have been grumbles about the sudden withdrawal of the bus service, which serves the venue of the Tuesday Club. What can we do, people are saying? Well, I'm a great believer in hearing the problem from the horse's mouth, so to speak. I don't want to get tangled up in gossip and misinformation. So I offer to invite the local councillor in charge of transport to come to the coffee morning and speak to the group. In my innocence, when I say to the group they could invite a friend along, I expect the group to double in size. 25 to 30 people is what I'm expecting. Fortunately, the cafe staff have been alerted to the fact that the numbers would be large as people kept phoning them to ask about the meeting. So they had suggested that we meet in the community kitchen next door that would hold up to 30 people. Picture, if you will, a sunny day. Half an hour before the start time, the room is already full and I am watching a seemingly unending line of people approaching. And I'm desperately asking if there is anywhere else we can meet. Maybe the barns? Nope, cows are in the barns. Maybe the polytunnels? Nope, they're full of veg. Those already in the room take matters into their own hands. Everybody out, someone says, take your chairs. And those who need to sit can use them. The rest of us will have to stand. Three councillors arrive, as do BBC Radio News and the local paper. This is not how I had envisaged it. As you can imagine, there are mutterings about how badly organised this open meeting is. How dare the council put on a meeting in a venue that is not fit for purpose? Over 150 people have turned up. Wanting to pour oil on troubled waters, I stand before them all and humbly apologise. It's my fault, I tell them. It never occurred to me so many people would turn up to this coffee morning group. The mutterings subside and I can see kindness in their eyes towards this poor woman who had a small event grow out of hand and they calm down enough to hear what the councillor has to say. So the ice cream moment? Well, some people came forward to offer their services to form a steering group who subsequently helped to set up a community bus service. But that, as they say, is a whole other story. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Uh, a lovely ice cream moment there. Um, and if we can 
Go back to the board, please, Matt. It's a three. And I think that's game over. It is indeed. Thank you for uh, being with us. I hope you enjoyed that little tour of uh, some of our projects around uh, Torbay. Um, we have to live with seagulls, and it's not their fault that they like ice creams, but they are a challenge, and it's a challenge that we like to overcome wherever possible. We're now going to take a five minute break. Um, if you could come back in five minutes, that would be much appreciated. Okay, welcome back everyone. So what we're going to do now um, is we're going to go into breakout rooms um, and you'll be able to join um, hopefully someone who you chose to be in a room with who you emailed me about earlier. If not, um, you'll be in a room with some lovely person um, or with two or three people from some of the groups and activities that you've been hearing from earlier. So Matt is at the moment just sorting out the breakout rooms and in a moment um, you, a little message will come up on the screen to invite you to join a breakout room where you'll be for, uh, where, are, where are we, about six or seven minutes now, about six minutes and um, uh, then, uh, then we will. You can ask people in the breakout rooms anything about their groups or activities, or about asset-based community development, or about community building, um, and have a lovely conversation there, hopefully. And then we will come back all together, and we will answer, hopefully, answer some of the questions that you've put into the chat today. So remember to, if you have any questions, to put them in the chat. So welcome back everyone. Um, I think we're all back together again now. Uh, we wish to finish on time so we've only got a couple of minutes left but we just wanted to open it up to see if there were any questions um, that have come out of those conversations that people wanted to, um, to ask or anything that's come out that they wanted to share. We have gone through the things that were on the chat and I think we've covered everything that was there. So um, does anybody have anything they wanted to share or ask? Or is it all now very clear? <laughs> Sharon, did you have your hands up? Sharon. I just wanted to say um, it's been so lovely to see and hear all the different things that have been happening because we're, when we're out in our own little worlds and especially obviously during COVID, um, I just want to say, yeah, brilliant work to everybody. Um, and uh, for someone who is um, absolutely recognises because I'm very much an advocate of early intervention, mental well-being. Um, it's very much about that that support and listening to the individual in front of you. Uh, it's just so lovely to hear all the different aspects and um, yeah, just brilliant. Well done, everyone. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> Thank you, Sharon. I mean, it feels a bit like that's a really lovely place to, to finish. Um, so uh, we just wanted to also share with people that, you know, this has been a journey for us and we're still learning, um, but we have now put together some toolkits and some ideas of how we can share the way we've been doing asset-based community development with others. So if people are interested in that, they just have to contact Marianne. She's popped her email in the, in the chat there for people to have a, have a look at. And obviously we can send out further information and there's information in the toolkits that are going live this week as well. So I think it just uh, leaves me to say thank you so much for everyone who's participated. Um, thank you to Matt and David for our technical support. Uh, and a big thank you to Marianne, who's kind of corralled us all together. Not like seagulls, fortunately, a little bit more okay. like cats, but you got us all here. Uh, and thank you so much, Marianne, for doing that. Everybody enjoy the rest of your day and we hope to speak again soon.